Hey traders, welcome to another video on my channel Equities. And today's video is just an introduction to stocks. I got few comments suggesting having shorter videos and reducing the number of topics. So today's video will just be an introduction. Then the coming four videos will cover financial statements in details, the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement, plus an introductory video to financial statements. And after that, I'm going to have three or four videos dedicated to financial issues. The full course about stocks will be extended to maybe around 25 videos in total to cover everything from the basics to the more advanced topics. As I said before, this is going to be another long journey. So without any past dues, let's move on. First, let me get the legal stuff out of the way. Please make sure to read the disclaimer before proceeding. In brief, I'm not a financial advisor. These videos represent my own understanding and opinion about the topics presented. These are not a recommendation of any sort. All information and data presented are from sources believed to be accurate, but accuracy is not guaranteed. Okay, so with this out of the way, Let's get started. In this video, I will be covering the following subjects. What are stocks? Shares classification? Market capitalization? Types of shares? Stocks splits? And finally, stocks buyback. And of course, at the end, as usual, I will end the video with the closing notes. Okay, great. So, what do we mean by stocks? A stock is a portion of a company. You could look at a company as if it's an entity that is divided into shares stocks. This is where the word shares came from. Shares. So when you buy a stock, you own a portion, a share of that company. But how much you ac actually own of this company? It's a percentage from the number of shares. Okay, this makes sense, but which one, which number of shares? We will see that we have three different classifications of a company's stocks or shares. We have something called authorized shares, outstanding shares, and floating shares or the float. Let's see what do we mean by each. A lot of people get confused about the different classifications and the number of shares. Which one should I use? Which one is more important? What's the difference between the different naming of shares or classifications of shares. So let me take some time here to explain it. I promise to make the, the video as short as possible, but this is important to be explained. The first one we have is authorized shares, usually denoted by AS. And this represents the maximum number of shares that a corporation is legally permitted to issue. 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to have a very detailed example so just follow up with me on this and and then you'll see exactly what what each of this term means the next one is outstanding shares and this is the total number of shares held by all its shareholders Pay attention to this. This includes shares that are held by institutional investors, restricted shares owned by company officers or insiders, by the government. Restricted means it's not available to be sold. There is some restriction. Sometimes there is something called blackout period, where when an employee gets compensation in shares, he 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 cannot sell them for uh, for for some time, months or years. It depends. But anyhow, I don't want to complicate things. Let's just keep moving. Outstanding shares are shown on a company's balance sheet. And this is the number used in calculating the key financial ratios. As we are going to see in uh, the videos about financial ratios, as I mentioned in the beginning of this course, you would see that the number of shares that we use when we want to compute the earnings per share or the market cap, it's the outstanding shares. A company's number of outstanding shares is not constant and may fluctuate widely over time. This is where the word dilution comes into play. When the number of outstanding shares increase so any ratio that is per share will decrease the denominator increase so the ratio decrease we will discuss this into details when we when we do the the financial ratios as i said next we have floating shares, the float. This is the total number of shares available for trading on the exchange. So in other words, if you subtract floating shares from outstanding shares, you would know the restricted shares or shares that are outstanding by the company but are not available for trade okay next we have something called treasury stocks or treasury shares those are repurchased shares so the total number of outstanding shares decrease and this is where the term anti-dilutive comes into play. Dilution and anti-dilutive. The treasury stocks, these shares are not included in the financial ratios because they decrease the outstanding shares. So they are not included in the financial ratios. And also, this reduces the shareholders' equity. Uh, I, I go in, in depth into these terms in my video about financial statements. Uh, I'm going to put a link in, in the description. But just to, 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 to say a quick word about it, in any company you have assets and you have liability. Liabilities plus equity Equity is the shareholder's wealth in this company. 
if a company has one million dollars of assets and it has liabilities of five hundred thousand so the shareholders equity is five hundred thousand okay treasury shares can be reissued to raise capital or through stock dividends or employees compensation next we have something called retired shares a company can retire its treasury stocks we said that the treasury stocks could be reissued or resold to his capital the company could retire its treasury stocks, cancel them off its financial statements, off its balance sheet, and they are permanently cancelled and cannot be reissued later. So, in other words, it reduces the authorized shares. We said we have authorized shares, outstanding shares, and floating shares. When a company retires shares, it reduces its authorized shares. Next, the shelf offering. When a company needs to raise cash, one, op one option is to issue shares and sell them to the public. The company, when a company needs to raise cash, it would file for a shelf offering where it's planning on selling a portion of the authorized shares she would file for let's say 1 million shares authorized shares 1 million but it's planning on selling let's say half million now but it got authorization for the whole 1 million so she sold five million five hundred thousand now and she has five hundred thousand called shelf offering it will put them on the shelf like standby it does this so it it doesn't have to go through the offering process again when selling share whenever it decide to sell shares as long as the shelf offering shares balance is not zero it could sell shares okay even if you are confused a little bit now we are going to have uh, a nice example that would explain everything let me now explain what's market cap market cap or market capitalization this is not the company's value because again this is a point of confusion i'm not going to go into details about valuation but just i want to mention that market cap is not the company's value it's what the market believes the company's value is because there are shares outstanding shares and the company has a price for the shares so if you're looking from the market's point of view this is the company's capital but this is not the value of the company okay when you when you say outstanding shares again this doesn't mean the available shares for trading or the word available is not accurate outstanding shares for instance let's say it's 1 million 80% is available for the public but from the outstanding shares there is 20% which is held by the government when you calculating the market cap is the price 
times the outstanding shares. But the available outstanding shares actually is not 100% of the outstanding shares. It's just 80% because 20% is not available for a trade. It's owned by the government. Okay, let's go over an example and see exactly what each of these terms means. Company ABC, a publicly traded company, has 10 million authorized shares. And all those 10 million are outstanding shares held by shareholders. The current price is $12, so its current market cap is $120 million. 12 times 10 million. I didn't say anything about shareholders' equity at this stage. Let's, let's just take it step by step. Okay, market cap, 120 million. Just a quick note. This amount is integrated, is part of the shareholders' equity, but it's not the shareholders' equity. Okay? Company ABC is looking at multiple future investment opportunities during, say, the coming 10 years. And these investment opportunities is expected to increase its shareholders' wealth. It needs money, so it decided to get authorization to issue an additional 10 million shares. Okay? Pay attention now. Additional authorized shares, 10 million. Let's assume it gets approved. So once it gets approval, it will have 10 million outstanding shares and the additional newly issued 10 million authorized shares. Correct? As per its forecast, during the next three years, it needs $60 million. So it offered 6 million shares at $10. By the way, the market price could be anything. So let's say that the market price was $12 when the company issued 6 million shares at $10. Okay? Let's keep moving and see what happens. So after the sale of the 6 million shares, now it has 4 million authorized shares left. It had 10. It sold 6, so, so there are 4 million authorized shares. And now the outstanding shares became 16 million. Okay? After the news, the market price fluctuates and finally settles at 10. Usually it goes below the offering price and then it comes up in anticipation that the new investment will be successful and increase share shareholders' equity, but anyhow, this is not the point. So the new market cap will be 16 million, the 10 outstanding plus 6, times the current market price, with, which is $10, so it's $160 million. It still has 4 million authorized shares, which in this case is also equal the shelf offering balance, correct? Three years have passed, the investments were profitable, but the market reaction was not high enough to the announced results. So the company board believed that the share price is undervalued at $13. So it decides to repurchase 2 million shares at, say, $14. So now it has 4 million authorized shares, 2 million treasury stocks, remember, treasury stocks, those could be resold in the market to the public. 
and 14 million outstanding shares. There was 16. It bought back 2 million. So there are 14 million outstanding shares. The market reacted very positively to the news and pushed the price to $16 in anticipation of future profits. So now the new market cap will be the outstanding shares, 14 million times $16, the current price of the stock in the market, which is $224 million. Is this example clear? Because I tried to include all the different shares classifications that I mentioned to see exactly what each of them means. Okay, next let's look at the types of shares. There are three types of shares. The common shares, the preferred shares, and the warrants. Holders of common shares can participate in the company's decision-making process. This is typically what you get when you buy a stock in, in the market on exchange. They are entitled to receive dividends. And if the company goes bankrupt, you may have a claim on the company's assets after all other claims have been satisfied. Next, there are the preferred shares. And preferred shareholders, they have a higher priority in claims on dividends and on the company's assets in case of liquidation. So in case of liquidation, the preferred shares will be paid before the common shares and they are entitled to receive fixed dividends on a regular basis. Finally, a warrant. A warrant is just a contract, long-term contract that gives the investors the option to purchase the entity's common stock at pre-specified price on or before the warrant's expiration date. Okay, next we look at next topic, stock splits. We have two different type of splits. We have the regular stock split and stock reverse split. The stock split when a company divides its existing shares into multiple shares. Basically to lower the trading price of the stock to increase the liquidity of its shares. When the stocks are cheaper, more smaller traders will afford to buy it, like for example Tesla and Apple. Stock reverse split, on the other hand, it's when a company consolidates its existing shares into fewer numbers and hence increase the price of its stock. Now pay attention, it reduces the total number of outstanding shares. Okay, keep this in mind. It reduces the total number of outstanding shares in the open market, but this is a signal of a company in distress, a company that has problems. Maybe it needs to increase its price to stay in the NASDAQ. Okay? What about stocks buyback? Now, remember, by a reverse split, you reduce the number of outstanding shares. And this often signal a company is in distress. Another way in which a company reduces its outstanding shares is by shares buyback. A company has unutilized cash, cash laying down in banks, doing nothing. It believes its shares are undervalued. So instead of the company seeking other investments or pay debts, it invests in its own shares. It buys back its shares. We are not going to go deeper at this stage, so we'll just stop here for now. 
Um, I believe I, I covered everything that I wanted to say about stocks at this stage. I introduced a lot of information in this video. I believe that these are the basics, the very basics that every trader should know. As I said, I will post many videos that will dive much deeper into most of these topics. Um, in this video, I, I, on purpose, I included topics that you come around on daily basis, in articles you read, posts on social media, on Twitter, or even discussion. When you, when you discuss stocks with a friend of yours, you should know these basics. What is a stock? What is outstanding shares? What's stock, stocks buy back? In my very first video introducing the channel, I said the purpose of this channel is to help novice traders to become disciplined, advanced traders. And it's impossible that this would be done in one video. So in the next few videos, as I said in the beginning, I'll introduce and explain financial statements in great details and then this will be followed by financial issues. Finally, as I always say, let's all trade like a pro. Thank you very much everyone, good luck and have a great day.